Cabbage Mummies, it is your friend, Michelle L. Myers. Happy November. <clears throat> I say happy November because I think so many people would agree. Um, it's been a rough year, so we have to kind of get happiness wherever we can. I'm in the United States of America, so it's uh, <laughs> really interesting. <laughs> it's really interesting we're talking about right now, so... Um, I'll wait for some of you all to pop on there. Hi, hi, hi. Hello, everybody. I try to come on consistently when I do come on about the same time, but I don't always make it. So I just like to do these check-ins, sort of see how everybody is doing, and also just remind you of a few things that when you're on this path, you sometimes just need to hear somebody say. So today is a Thursday, I believe. Is it Thursday? Yes, it's Thursday, November the 12th. Again, like I said, I'm in the United States of America, so there's lots of political stuff going on. The world is crazy. Coronavirus is still, you know, doing weird stuff and people in places. And um, and then you just have the regular run-of-the-mill jerks that are in your life. And, you know, there's a lot of stress that's going on. So, hi, mommies. What I like to do is to check in with you all and just sort of see how everybody's doing. We want to make sure that you know, as this journey progresses and as it goes on, one of the worst things in the entire world is when you just feel like you're completely alone. So I, I'm, I want to always first say to you, you are definitely not alone. There are hundreds of thousands of women, unfortunately, and families that have gone through miscarriage and loss and stillbirths and things like that. So I hope that you are okay. And remember now, there's different definitions of okay. Okay doesn't mean necessarily that you're exactly back the way that you were before. But okay can literally mean, you know what, I got up today, I actually put clothes on, I ate at some point, and um, any responsibilities I had, I did at least one of them. You know, sometimes okay is just that you, you know, had a moment that everything was okay and it's, it passes. So what I want to chat with you today is about the holidays that are coming holidays are coming hi ladies hi 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 ladies you all should put to me where you're from in the comments so we can see where everybody's from sometimes we have people from italy some people are from scotland and other places obviously the united states of america things like that um so in the united states of america and we have people from all over the world that tune in here so that's why i usually say the country that i'm in plus my voice doesn't help people thinking that they're totally in some other country so in the comments, you'll put what country that you're from or what state you're from. A lot of times also what can happen is you can end up making friends and meeting somebody that has the same sort of, in the same state as you are. Oh, I put my glasses on so I can see. It's got, it's weird. Sometimes I forget I don't put them on, so it sounds really ratchet. Um, hi, Rena. Rena. Yeah, Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. Wisconsin. I have never been to Wisconsin, and I've never been to Florida either, I guess. <laughs> I guess I haven't. But I have been a few places, just not lots and lots and lots. Okay. That being said, let's get started with this. Why is this? The screen looks weird to me. Does it look weird to anybody else? Or maybe it's just my screen. I don't know. I have a lot of light coming from that place. Maybe that's what it is. I'll turn it. Let's turn it. Because I sense a lot of lights. I don't know if that's any better. Is it any better? <laughs> All right, so I'll just talk like this. I'm just going to do the best I can do. All right, so here's the deal. I'm sort of reading this because my tripod broke, so that's why you're getting also this lovely rendition of me trying to suck this up. Oh, forget it. I'm at my piano at the moment. All right, so here's the deal. Um, the holidays are coming up, right? And we know that the holidays can usually have their own shared health. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go sit on the couch over here. It'll be a lot easier. The holidays have their own brand of health sometimes that can happen. And so lots of times pe ladies will be, you know, just really upset because you have friends and family that are coming in this year because of the pandemic and other things that are going on. Ha! Ah, lighting, better. Because of the pandemic and other things that are going on, I know some of you um, are already going to be stressed out by friends and family and you're just stressed out also because of the pandemic and things that are going on with that. So holidays can bring people saying things to you like, are you still crying over the baby that you lost five months ago? People say the most ratchet things on the entire planet because I don't know, people just like to think they're right. I don't know how you all feel about that. 
So, because um, Thanksgiving is what is going to be here. So, you have friends and family that you may not have seen since you lost the baby or the baby died, I like to say. Or you just have, you know, a, uh, where you're not going to be working or not as involved. And so, sometimes when you don't have as much to do, your mind can get kind of squirrely. So, during the holidays, I have a few taps for you that you might want to just try to engage in so that you can set yourself up not to have perhaps those when those triggers come or when that thing comes that you just feel like you can't handle it anymore and you want to just blow up and you know just you you just feel like you're going to lose it there's a few things that you can do especially during the holidays because you're going to see more people or your schedule changes a wee bit stuff like that one of the things that i think is so very very important hi ladies one thing that is very 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 so important is for you to set aside a time, you all hear me say this, set aside a time for you to think about your child, to purposely have a moment that you are grieving. That could be once a week, almost like on your calendar, on your phone, on your desk, so that throughout the week, when you feel those surges of those feelings and those feelings rise up, you literally, and you can't deal with it, whether you're in a room with relatives or whether you know, you're know you cooking and all this stuff is going on and something comes up about the baby, it will really help you not panic and not be overwhelmed if you know, you know what, this is happening right now, but I know tomorrow at 7 o'clock I've set aside a half an hour just to cry, eat something, vent, call my best friend about it, think about the baby, write stars or poetry or letters to your child, name your child. There's all sorts of things that you can do, but whenever you set aside time, as in every day at 9 p.m. or every day at 9 in the morning I take 15 minutes and I sit thinking about my Sarah. I you know get all my feelings out if I feel like I need to cry that day I cry. If I feel like I'm just angry that day I'm angry. No matter what it is I'm feeling like I can do that because I set aside a time to do it. I promise you what that does is throughout your day when you feel like I'm gonna have a moment you can allow yourself a little bit of grace and control when you can go you know what, I'm not going to do that right now, I'm okay right now, and I'll fall apart at 9 o'clock. And it sounds sort of silly, and I'm sure there's some psychological term for it, but it's something that really helped me, especially in the early days, when I just really didn't know where to place everything just yet. You know, where you're just kind of overwhelmed and you don't know where to place it. The holidays also bring people out of, sometimes people will say things around the holidays that they didn't say all year long. So people, it could be an emotional time, I suppose it is. And you're already dealing with lots of stuff, plus all the stuff that's going on in our world. So setting yourself up for things that are going to be positive and things that are going to help you when you do have a crisis is the most important thing to do. So that's one thing. The other thing is to have a tag team buddy, so to speak, an accountability person or just a support. And it's one person that is going to in person be with you through this holiday dinner or this holiday day that you talk beforehand, even now, a week or two before, and you say, listen, on Thanksgiving when we're all together, I need you to have my back. I, I, I think it's going to be emotional. If someone's bringing a new baby or there's talk of a pregnancy and things like that, ugh, that can freaking just throw you off. So it's really good if you do have a person that you can say, listen, I need you to have my back that day. Really talk beforehand and know that if you do find yourself getting emotionally overwhelmed or you're in a situation where you're like, I just am going to just, I'm not okay, you already have a person that is set up ahead of time that can really be there for you. So that's number two. Okay. Uh, the third thing is to really make sure you're being honest. If you don't feel like going to some freaking turkey dinner because you're just not in a place where you can talk about it or be asked about your baby or be overwhelmed with it, if you're going to go someplace and you know that a person has a newborn and you're like, holy hell, if I have to sit through hearing a newborn and about the twins and about a pregnancy or if I have to sit here and see a pregnant belly for like five hours, I'm not going to make it. You have every right in the entire planet for that to be your story and for that to be your truth and that no one can judge you for that. So that's the third thing is you must stand up for yourself. You must speak your truth. If you're fine, then you're fine. But if you have a moment that you got to and you're like, I was fine all day and then along about six o'clock, someone said something and it just made me overwhelmed. You're allowed to say, I need to break. 
you're allowed to even skip it all together is what I'm trying to tell you. Nobody can, oh, you owe it to your mom. You got to show up for Thanksgiving. Or, oh, you owe it to the kids. That's a lot, a lot of times we hear if we have other children. You have to be a good mom to those kids too. So even if you're about to fall apart, you don't want to miss mamma and poppy for Thanksgiving. Well, you know, you make concessions and you can make some compromises. But if there's something that you can't do, don't force yourself to do it and then cause some type of regression in the fact that your healing is taking place. Healing doesn't mean that you don't think about your baby anymore. Healing doesn't mean that you just go on and, you know, you're a rock star. And Some people are like that. But you know what? Freaking I wasn't like that. I was a mess for two years. I fell completely apart. I was on antidepressants sometimes, sleeping pills sometimes. I was, I was therapy, holistic, tai chi, meditation. I don't know. I, I did not. When my daughter died, I was a bloody mess. And I, I didn't have to apologize to anybody about that. But I didn't have anybody telling me that. So I just felt like I was a terrible mom, a terrible person, a terrible, 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 terrible. You're not terrible. You're human. And so sometimes you need to make concessions for yourself and do things for yourself. And some people might not freaking like it. And that's okay because you have to do what is best for you in regard to the situation. And the turkey, you're not eating any this year with everybody, is not going to kill the whole situation. All right. Hello, Donata. And Raya, hello. I love Wisconsin. It's been cold. I, you know, I, I love to. I love, I, I love nature. And I recently went up to Prescott, Arizona, and it's so different. I live down here in the valley of, like, death valley of Arizona. It's hot. It was 123 degrees this summer at one point. Um, but I went to Prescott uh, last week, I suppose, and it was so beautiful on the mountain. So I'm sure Wisconsin about this time of year is absolutely gorgeous. And you guys will be getting snow and all that sorts of stuff. So those are my three tips for those of you this holiday weekend. Uh, I mean, Thanksgiving is coming is what I'm talking about. Remember, you matter just as much, if not even more so, because it's your feelings and you're the one that was carrying a baby that is no longer here. So people sometimes say things trying to like, like as if they say something and you're going to automatically be fine if they just keep pressuring you. Get up, go, do. That doesn't work for everybody. And sometimes you have to stand up for yourself and you have to say, listen, I, I need I need not to go to Thanksgiving dinner with our relatives and our crazy ass cousins and babies running all around. And, and, you know, blame it on COVID. I saw something today I read that they were like, you don't have to lie this year. You literally can say, you know what, due to the COVID-19 issue, I think we ought to just stay home. <laughs> And so you have, you know, that place where we always want to please everybody and we care so very much. But you also understand you deserve to be cared for and you deserve not to have a day of hell that you're just not ready for. And that's all right. Whether it's a baby shower, whether it's an announcement, whether it's a gender reveal party, you're not required to be someplace when your soul feels ripped apart. You are worth having moments where you just have to sometimes still be figuring it out. And that's all right. This miscarriage, this loss was not your fault. And I know you feel that way. I felt the same way too. But I always say, I didn't miscarry her. That's the name of the book. I didn't miscarry her. She died. Because I held on with all that I had. I wanted Sarah. I wanted my daughter so badly. I love children. And so when I first started hearing the word miscarriage afterward, it was just, I was in my second trimester and it, it didn't feel like just a miscarriage, like it was just something that just didn't work out. It was devastating. It's devastating. And it has been now 16 years, I suppose. And not a day goes by that I don't at some point. I think, you know, the universe and God does some interesting things I have three people in my life that are to name Sarah that I met all around about the same time and they're all different ages, you know. And But when I look at my cell phone with the Sarahs, when they call or they text and I get to just see that name, it does something for me. And when I call them and I just get to say the name Sarah because that was my daughter's name, it just, sometimes we don't hear our children's names. And I thank God for that grace, actually, because the other day, how I even met one of them was on. I went to her house the first day. It was the anniversary of the day that Sarah's due date. And it was really a special moment, I'd say. But you all, you are so very important. 
you know, there's children, but you can't have children without mummy. And mummy is the one housing babies, and we go through so much for our children. And this is a journey that is going to be not the easiest thing in your life, no. But they're in solidarity. You see on this page, there's over 66,000 women. 66,000 people have been touched. Just Then that's a little number, unfortunately, here on Facebook. But you don't have to feel as if you are just not understood whatsoever. There are people in your family and friends that just will not understand you. They won't, they won't understand why you do some of the things that you do. But I'm here to tell you, as your sister, unfortunately, on this journey, but fortunately that we got to meet, it is not your fault. And you don't have to carry this all by yourself. Look at all the women that are commenting on it, the women that like the post and share. Get inside of the small groups. I implore you to get inside the small groups because it's definitely something that I feel helped me when I was first starting this journey. To have that one-on-one -on -one with another mom and to have them respond to my questions or to have them, you know, just speak to me when I was having a really bad day and I said, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm going to blow my head off or fall and you don't really mean it and that's the thing whenever you go to counselors that haven't really um, you know experienced or dealt with child loss they sometimes direct the counseling and therapy in the wrong direction you need someone that if you really don't want to die but you just you're trying to express I sometimes feel like I just want to die and it's because your heart's so bad and they just want to go stick you on a bunch of pills then an understanding no I really don't want to die but I feel like I've already have inside of my heart and my soul so sometimes you need people who can understand that sort of language. And I believe here at Miss Charismatic Mothers, whether you message privately, or whether you're on the page, or whether you're on the groups, that we have beautiful ladies here who can understand what you're going through and who can say, you know what, I know what that feels like. I know what it feels like to go to sleep. Cry yourself to sleep sometimes. And then you wake up and you forget for five seconds, and maybe less than that, that you're not pregnant anymore. And then it washes over you. And I remember that moment for months when I first woke up and went down to touch my stomach because that's what you do. And then there wasn't a baby there. It's horrible. But you know what? This too, that feeling, even that feeling, will get softer and softer as the days go by. Anyone in the world can sit up and say, it's not your fault, it's not your fault, it's not your fault. But as women, we set up and be like, yeah, but I was the one that was housing that child. I was the one that was supposed to bring forth this life. But we don't have the power over life or death. I believe that God does, and he's a creator. And then you have people who then get into and say, why did God do this to me? Why, why? Well, I don't think that God took your child. I hate that nonsense, and that's BS. You all see on this page. I don't like that God need another angel crap and that stuff about how... Um, God won't give you more than you can bear. Well, that would make me hate God if that was actually, that's not even really a Bible verse. And people say, ask me, I'm in ministry. People ask me all the time about that. And I'm like, they prostitute this verse. God won't give you more than you can bear. And you are literally on the floor every day about to die. Well, what kind of God is that? So no, you're not being punished. You're human. You have cells. You have things that go on in your body. And yes, sometimes there's miracles and sometimes there's not. And unfortunately, most of us here, we didn't get a miracle with that pregnancy. That's why we're here together. But I can look at you and tell you, I know sometimes you feel like life isn't even going to go on, and it does. Somehow it goes on. Somehow you get up, and every day as you get up and you keep just going forward, that pain gets less and less. It never totally goes away. It's never like you wake up and all of a sudden, oh, I don't miss my baby at all. I, I don't even care if she was here or not, or he. No. But what happens is, I tell everybody it's a different type of labor. We labor when we're having babies and we're having children. But I believe when we lose our children, it's a labor. Every day has contractions. Sometimes it's a hard moment and then it eases up. Sometimes you can't hardly breathe and you don't think you can take the pain anymore. There's all types of transition that's going on. So I believe child loss to be its own sick set of circumstance of hell and labor that sometimes we feel like we can't do it. And so we need, you know, doulas and we need labor coaches through this. And that's what I am in this regard to say, you will get through this. This will not be devastating to you like it is now every single day of the rest of your life. 
But it's okay if you cry. It's okay if you're angry. It's okay if you're mad. It's okay if you just want to rip your hair out but don't really do it. It's okay if you don't want to, like I said, I don't want to hear about a baby or someone announcing a pregnancy. Or I don't want to sit at Thanksgiving and hear everybody all happy when I'm devastated. One of the worst things you all can do is just completely try to fake it. And when you're really upset about your baby... It's one of the worst things. It ends up compounding the feeling and it rises in you over and over. And at some point, unfortunately, you'll freaking explode. So, I am just one woman who 15, 16 now years ago lost a baby. And I, there was nobody. There was AOL groups and I finally found some women. But for about six months of my life, I felt like I wanted to just die. And I had to other kids. You know, a lot of people think, oh, if you have a baby, so when you lose a baby, it's not so bad. Oh, my. In a way, I used to tell people it felt worse because I knew the milestones I was missing. I, I knew the laughter and the sound of a baby giggling. And so I knew that was taken from me. And it was like an assault. Miscarriage and stillbirth. Babies born sleeping. Infant death is a trauma. So some of you think it's all just up in my head. Your body also can respond to trauma. It's no shame in going to a doctor being like things are completely out of whack. Your hormones can get out of whack. Your emotions get out of whack. Your body itself can develop illnesses and be sick whenever you have something traumatic happen to you. Does it mean that you're weak? It means that you had something really traumatic happen to you and you're not all right. And how are you supposed to be all right? You need time to be all right. You can't just ma wave a magic wand and it's okay. Um, Heather. Yes, yeah, Heather. I think God gives you things you can handle, but I also think he gives you the strength to overcome it. I do think that, you know, what's so funny about it is I would tell everybody hands down one of the most brilliant things that caused me to even do what I'm doing today is I do say it is my faith. I could never believe that God just wretchedly stole my child away. But I also am a firm believer that love can cover so many things in your life. And through love and through my faith, and I, I had days, it wasn't even praying. It was crying, but I was doing it towards God's direction, so to speak. There were days I was so broken, and then I'd go to uh, hear something positive online or watch a Christian video or a movie or listen to a song. Sometimes songs can even be so healing and I thank God every day that I did have family members that though they didn't understand my pain, they had great empathy for me and they cared for me and they loved me. And I especially had a friend named LaDonna that made me this care box that had everything Sarah in it for a baby. And she said, you, just because your baby's gone, you know, people don't understand. You, Your baby's not here. You might have an ultrasound picture and some of us don't have anything. You might have a stick that's pregnancy and having something with your child's name on it or a box, a memory box, things like that, what it does is it, it, it validates something to your spirit and your soul that, yes, that child was very, very real, but the child is no longer with us, but it mattered, and it mattered very greatly. I don't know. There's not a certain time limit where I can look and tell you, you know what, three months you feel this way, six months you feel this way, a year you feel this way, but I can tell you this. You're not alone. And as you go through this journey, be gentle with yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself and you constantly tell yourself, I should be here. I should be able to go to the baby shower. I should not dread Thanksgiving. Like Christmas, you know, I, I do Hanukkah. There's all sorts of things. People have, I should be fine here. I should, New Year's is coming. I'll be fine by then. You have these milestones. But you can't determine the state of a heart. You can't determine the state of your emotions based on a, possible desire that you want to be fine and it's okay to walk through it and sometimes year number five for me was harder than year number three and then year number eight you know eight was more difficult and then 10 11 12 13 14 year number 15 was the breeze and then year number 16 came and I fell apart on her, her due date you can't determine that but what you can have confidence about is you're not alone you can do it because you already are and you are not so just solely just the person and all there is to know and do and think about you is the fact that you had a pregnancy that you lost you are multifaceted beautiful creation of a divine creator and there's more to you than just birthing babies sometimes through this process people began to identify themselves only with a loss 
basically it's like introducing yourself saying hi I'm Michelle and I've had a miscarriage and I don't have a baby and and sometimes we can get so un overwhelmed with the grief that it becomes an identity for us but I tell you today that you're way more than that and we have to sometimes compartmentalize and that's what I told you all about the timing and how you can sit up and say you know what every day at 3 30 I'm going to go outside and just scream her name every night at 6 p.m. when I go to eat dinner I'm going to write her name on a piece of paper and talk to her even if you don't believe in heaven maybe it's just the energy and the spirit of you sit and talk the last thing I'll say to you is this again care for your heart care for your soul you matter you get to make all the decisions right now in regard to how you walk this out. People will try to guilt you into things. People will try to, they want you to be better. So they say all sorts of things. And sometimes when we don't magically pop up better, they get resentful almost. And that can be partners or family members that you have or friends. It's almost like they get an attitude with you because you're not better yet. Well, you know, it's been six months, it's been a year, it's been five years and you still cry over that. It was my child. And some people say stuff to you that they can't understand and so they hurt you. So we have to sometimes put off boundaries and guidelines and not accept the behavior of somebody who, although they love us, we have to sometimes teach them how to be with us in this moment. And you're not a weak person and you're not worthless. You're not useless. We say all these words to each other because an unfortunate death happened in our lives and somehow as mummy we rip ourselves apart. For those that have no children at all, you are still a mother. You are a mother whose child has died. And no matter what anybody tells you, you deserve love and compassion and sympathy over that. And you also deserve to be able to say, I'm a mom and my child died. I will leave you all with this. I remember the moment that I seriously knew there was, you know how you bargain, you bargain, you say, oh God, please, if everything is just all right, I'll X, Y, Z, and you know, X, Y, Z, you put stuff out there. And I remember the moment when I finally accepted, well, she's not here anymore. It's a hard moment, but in some ways, it allowed me to go from the begging, pleading, dear God, where me a miracle can happen stage. And I was able then to truly start grieving. Grief is so important to go through because you have to somehow balance within yourself the fact that you were growing this child inside of you and then he or she is no longer here. You can't always do that by yourself. Sometimes you need a friend or a counselor, a therapist, a family member, a doctor. It doesn't mean you're a weak person because you do need some assistance to You're dealing with a loss that is not equated with any other. When parents lose children, it's out of the natural order of life. It's always supposed to be the other way around. Sometimes that's too soon, but the point is, we're supposed to be old and dying when we're 90-something years old or 100 years old, right? But not when we're 100 days in the womb and not when we're five minutes born and surely not when you're nine months pregnant and you feel that to be baby kicking around and you think you're going to deliver the healthiest, most beautiful, perfect child, and instead the news that you get is that it's no longer breathing or there's no heartbeat. Those words stay with you and they almost just like they haunt us. But I do again tell you all that for me it's my faith in God, but love, when you are loved right where you are, something beautiful happens and it softens all the hard things that you are going through. So today, I do hope that you will reach out to others. I hope that you join the groups. I thank everybody for being here. I love, uh, I do read all your messages if I don't get them when we're in real time. And I want to tell you that um, don't be afraid to tell people no. Because the holiday, I can't ever put these on with one hand. Don't be afraid to tell people no. I have this all crooked. Look, I'm being silly. Don't be afraid to tell people no about this holiday Thanksgiving stuff if you just cannot do it and it's not working. Hi, Denise. It's all right. Do whatever you need to do for yourself. And then check back in here because during the holidays, I do get on more and we also po try to post a whole lot more. Special thank you to everyone who volunteers on the page, especially my daughter, Destiny, who definitely, definitely 
um, she's the one that's responsible for most of the posts, and she always makes sure that if you tag me in your messages, I get them, and also the ones through Messenger. So join groups. We still have the books. I will try to put the book on sale again before the year's out, if I can, in December. I don't think I can till next year, though, because I already did it for you guys twice this year through Amazon. The book is I Didn't Miss Carrie How She Died. Don't forget, go to post notifications on these videos, but also go and do reviews for the page. If you think that what we do here is helping, we want you to help tell other moms that because my goal in the name of my data is to help as many people as we possibly can this includes daddies brothers sisters uncles cousins grandparents anyone who is associated with the loss i am going to be starting a page called miscarriage matters to siblings where we're going to have a page for whether it's your younger children middle-aged children whatever that have you know their own feelings about miscarriage and how the loss of their sibling affected them so thank you all for being here i will talk to you really really soon i hope you enjoy the page today uh no contest again this year we did a bunch in the beginning of the year we probably will again for necklaces or tribute items moral items things like that so i'm going to stockpile them probably in december when things go on sale and then we'll start doing that again in january so thank you all again from the bottom of my heart when this page anything that happens on this page is a memorial for my own daughter that's how i see it so i'll talk to you all really soon god bless you and have a very gentle thursday bye